Lake, thank you so much for choosing this video. I am in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm visiting East Coast Honda. And today, I'm checking out a 2017 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. And this is the loaded up version of the Honda Ridgeline. It really has a lot of features to show off. And it's all black, so, so it makes it even more fun. So let's go ahead and check it out. Consistent with the black theme, you have 18 inch glossy black wheels, which are looking really sharp. And this vehicle has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc brakes in the front and solid disc brakes in the back. The name of this color is Crystal Black Pearl. And it is like a shiny black looking really awesome. And you also have this kind of a, I don't know, a tungsten color metallic accent here across the front there's a big Honda emblem you have parking sensors there on the corners there and on the other side there's little round circles an LED accent around the headlight and then the headlights are powered by LEDs for the low beams and halogen for the high beams and then you have halogen fog lights at the bottom and check it out, you have the Black Edition name right in there. It's looking pretty awesome. So this is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key with the lock and unlock buttons there. You have the remote start and a panic button at the bottom. And it also has a physical key on the inside. Use this little lever there to take out the key if you need it. But generally, just keep the key in your pocket. This whole key fob in your pocket and you can use the vehicle without actually taking this out of your pocket. As long as you have the key with you, you walk up to the door, you can lock the door by pushing this button. Let me demonstrate this lock by pulling it right here, because if I pull it here, it will unlock for me. And that's how it just senses my hand position, senses the key nearby, and unlocks it for me. So let's take a look on the inside of the passenger door. All black interior, but check it out. You have that gloss black accent there, which is looking awesome soft to the touch, touch features all the way around your arm you have the red stitching there which is looking cool storage pocket there you have bottle holder as well as little storage pockets it's kind of like a shelf system with your pocket shelf and then another storage area there now this is uh, big enough to where you can put a file folder magazines your mail or whatever you want there at the bottom there's your threshold power adjustable seats here on the passenger side now these are leather trim seats but check it out they're black with a red accent you have the bled you have the uh, the red contrast stitching there but you also have inside the perforations now, these are heated seats by the way but inside here is the red as well so it really looks good especially when the Sun hits it you can really see the red and then you have the uh, black edition embroidered in the back of the seat it's looking pretty cool there's your floorboard it even has black edition on the floor mat which is hooked in place so it doesn't slide around on you you have that gloss black accent on the dashboard lockable glove compartment opens up and it's all smooth plastic on the inside to keep it clean now on the black edition the privacy glass really helps out making that giving you that blacked out look and the privacy glass is easy to see out of the vehicle, so you don't have to worry about that. It reduces the strain in your eyes. So here's the inside of the back door. Same contrast stitching there. You have a little storage pocket here. Cup holder and a place to put your phone there in a more forward position where it's comfortable. Soft to the touch armrest. And there is your threshold. Now the back seat is kind of like a bench seat and it will flip up in a 60-40 split fashion so you can utilize the all flat floor for storage. You also have an armrest with cup holders there. It's pretty good size. Of course your center passenger, if you need a center passenger you can move it out of the way. And you have a USB port here for charging your phone. Because you know what the passengers like to do, they like to play around with their phone while you're driving. So lifting these seats up Real simple, you have this little handle here. You lift it up and gets out of your way, and you can utilize that whole floor or a portion of it. So you can have a combination of passenger and cargo space.
Let's take a look at the back of the vehicle. Now here's your tailgate. You do have parking sensors back here as well. Across the bumper, you have a towing package under here. And this vehicle can tow up to 5,000 pounds. It also has a 1,600 pound payload, which is very substantial. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle. So this tailgate folds down in kind of a normal truck fashion, like so. So you can sit on the tailgate and listen to music because it has the speakers in the back of the tailgate hidden somewhere or in the back of the bed of the vehicle so you can actually play music and it sounds fantastic. But anyways, so you can fold it down like so or you can lift this up like so and right here it shows you it says release. There's a little handle under here and this opens up this way. So that way you can access the bed of your truck easier which I think is fantastic. So you have some LED accent lights or cargo lights there on the side. Tie downs on all four corners. You even have a power inverter in here and a little storage cubby. So this is a uh, 400 watt with the engine running in park or 150 watts while the engine's off and then it's a 115 volt uh, power inverter. So you can plug in a TV in the back here and while you're you know, hanging out or whatever you want. It's really awesome. Of course, you can, um, you know, charge things or whatever, too. You can see it has that sliding back glass. Okay, so this is the other portion that I think is amazing. It's a lockable trunk. So let's lift this up. And check it out. You have this huge, huge uh, storage area back here. And it's all very durable plastic. So you can throw tools or whatever you want back here. You can also fill it up with ice and put a bunch of drinks in here if you want to because it does have a drain plug if you need to use it for that. This is also where you'll find your spare tire. And it has this tray that slides out. Once you undo those wing nuts there, it will slide out and rest on this little portion right here. So that way you can access your tire and tools easier. You have this little shelf here on the side. You even have a bag holder here here and here so you can hang a bag or grocery bags or some kind of bag there so it doesn't roll around on you and it's designed to where water will not get in there so you can see it has a seal but also it's just a physical barrier uh, to keep water from getting in your compartment so if you put your luggage back here and it rains you don't have to worry about it and it's lockable which is great your fuel door is on the driver's side which is very convenient right here and it's a capless design you just put your nozzle in there pump your gas you don't have to worry about a cap you don't have to worry about your check engine light turning on you just pump it in there and go if you don't want to use a remote start you can start the vehicle you just have to have the key inside put your foot on the brake and push this button Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the floor mat hooks in place. You have a foot actuated parking brake. Place to put your left foot, a nice big place. There's your accelerator and brake pedals. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open up the hood, there's a little latch a little bit to the left of the Honda emblem here. It's right in here, you just move it to the right, lift it up. It's very easy to lift up. You do have to use a prop to lift the hood, to hold the hood up for you. But you do have two places to hook it, right there for your normal position, or if you want the, the hood really high, you can hook it right there, and that way the hood will be completely out of your way. So that's what it looks like with the hood all the way up. So let's take a look under the hood, and it's covered up with a bunch of plastic, but there is a V6 engine in there. It's a direct injection IVTEC V6 with a uh, multi-displacement system to where you, it will, uh, you can cut back to three cylinders instead of all six cylinders firing to kind of save you some gas when you can when you can spare it. It's 260 horsepower by the way and it's paired to a six-speed automatic transmission. Let's take a look on the inside of the driver's door. You can see you have that puddle lamp there at the bottom. It's basically a mirror of the other door but we have a few more buttons. Your power window controls, you have automatic one touch up and down for the front 
driver and passenger. Door lock controls there. You even have two presets for your power seat. There's your power seat controls. You also have lumbar support and it's adjustable with that little switch there. Seats are very awesome looking and they're very comfortable. Right in here we have a few buttons. You adjust the side mirrors using these controls here. There's your eco mode. Parking sensors, you can turn those on and off. Your trash control, you can turn off. Cargo lights, you can turn on and off. And the, uh, the AC power inverter, you can turn that on there. You have a crash mitigation system you can turn off if it's giving you a bunch of false alarms and then you have a lane keeping assistance uh, button which you can turn on and off as well the steering column has, has a tilt and a telescoping steering column and then you can lock it in place right there once you get it in place okay let's go ahead and take a look at the inside looking pretty sharp And of course, I have plenty of leg room, knee room, and everything. I mean, just very comfortable seating position and everything. So let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. It's a leather wrap steering wheel, and check it out. It has the red contrast stitching on the inside. And the leather has like a little bit of a comfortable texturing right here. So I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit smoother than some other steering wheels, but it's pretty comfortable. It gives a little bit in the hand so it doesn't dig into your, your, your hand while you're driving for long periods of time. But let's go ahead and start over here on the left side of the steering wheel. You see you have the uh, volume for your radio, tune through your stations, your presets, and then uh, your source like AM, FM, stuff like that. Now this button will cycle through your phone. For your first press will go to your phone, your radio, and then your navigation screen. So. I'll just show you here. We we'll look at the screen here. Right now we're at the phone. Push it and you kind of cycle through. You can kind of cycle through to whichever one you want and then whichever one you land on and rest on there, it'll go to it. So that the whole idea is to keep your hands on the wheel and you know not fumbling around with the uh, the radio screen there. You also have this button here which will you can push that and it brings up a little bit more of a menu system so you can uh, scan, save presets, things like that while keeping your hands on the wheel. Down here is your Bluetooth controls. You can answer calls, hang up. You can also use the voice recognition to make calls based on people in your, your phone book. So you can push that and say, call John Vincent. If John Vincent is in your phone uh, book, you can call him up just by pushing the button and saying his name. Back here is your heated steering wheel controls. It has a little indicator light that it's on and off. Here on the right side is your cruise control. You can push that and then this has a uh, adaptive cruise control as well so once you turn that on you can it'll kind of give you an idea here of that it's on your lane keeping assistant and your adaptive cruise control is active you can set it if you're not familiar with adaptive cruise control once you set it and you're going a certain speed it will match the speed of a vehicle in front of you if, it's, if the vehicle in front of you is going slower than you so we can push this button and it'll kind of cycle through our distance here. So we can push it and it shows different distances. So uh, I like a far distance between me and the vehicle in front of me, but you can set that uh, based on the situation. And then there's your lane keeping assist. You can turn that on and off there. It'll actually steer the vehicle back into the lane from what I understand. I hadn't tried it. I'm not really that good at uh put getting out on the highway and let my hands off the wheel or whatever but it actually uh, steer a little bit back into the lane for what I understand and then here these buttons will correspond with, to the screen here in the center of the gauges which we'll get to in just a minute your windshield wiper controls are here on the left side is your headlight controls so you have an off parking lights automatic and then your headlights and then your fog lights turn on and off here. Okay, so you can see you have your RPMs on the left as far as your gauge is. Bottom right is your fuel gauge. Top right is your engine coolant temperature. And the very, very top center is your digital speedometer. So that's your speedometer for the vehicle. So right now you have this information screen. And I'm going to turn that off. 
So right now it's just showing you that it's low on fuel, which is not desperately low, but it needs some gas pretty soon. And you have your odometer outside temperature there on the bottom right. But let's use these buttons to kind of scroll through. These buttons here, we can kind of scroll through uh, some more information on that screen. So let me get closer here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to scroll down. It's going to give us a trip. So we have a trip A and B right here. So the distance, the average fuel economy, and the range. The average fuel economy and the range is not accurate right now. But the little bar at the bottom will change as you're driving, so you can keep an eye on that if you want to. So you have two trips there. There's your compass, tire pressure, oil life, and then you can change the kilometers per hour if you need to. And then it goes back to your uh, your trips there. So it kind of gives you some more information. You notice when, it, when you get low on fuel or anything, time to change oil, that kind of stuff, it's going to pop up and let you know. So you don't actually have to go through and check your tire pressure all the time. It'll pop up and let you know if something is out of spec. You also have little lights here on the sides as you're driving. Right now they're white, but they'll actually turn green as you're driving and, and, and fade uh, from white to green depending on how you're driving. So if you really want to get really good gas mileage, you kind of keep it in the green. And it kind of, it's kind of like a driving aid for saving gas, which is pretty neat. Got a nice red button there. Okay, so here's your touch screen. And let's go ahead and go to the home screen. So you can see all your icons here. You have navigation, phone, and all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and start looking at them. And you notice it's all red background too. Let's take a look at the map. See what it looks like. Yeah, nice clear, clear clarity and resolution to the screen. Good um, contrast ratio on the uh, the colors there, and everything is looking pretty good. All right. And then your phone, see what that looks like. Now once you pair your phone, there's not one connected, but once you pair the phone, you'll have access to your phone book and recent calls and stuff like that and favorites. Information, uh, this is like your trip computer. Uh, uh, but check it out, I like this part. The, the clock and the wallpaper, right now it has the like space or whatever, that's your wallpaper now, but you can put anything you want there which is pretty neat and also a nice big clock and date in case you really need to focus on the on the date and the clock the time for some reason okay so the audio screen so you have your uh, this is your radio you see it says FM you have your presets at the bottom you can tune you can seek scan or whatever but you have lots of different ways of playing music through the sound system because it's a modern vehicle so you have AM FM satellite radio Bluetooth USB, you can hook up an iPod, Pandora radio, projection with your cell phone, or an auxiliary input. So, no CD player for the people that are trying to keep the 90s alive. No CD player. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Honda iLink, that's actually a, 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 an app that goes on your cell phone. So you can you know control the certain things on the screen with your cell phone. Truck bed audio, that is awesome. You get to actually transfer the sound. Instead of having it inside the cab, you have it out on the bed area and it stops playing in the vehicle and out there. So if you're tailgating, you sit on a tailgate and it sounds absolutely awesome playing music back there. And so that's, that's a really cool feature. Your smartphone connection, smartphone connection. That's your to project your Apple CarPlay or uh, Android Auto onto the screen. So once you plug in your phone, install the necessary programs, uh, that's what that's for. And then you have tons of settings here. So, you know, audio, Bluetooth, smart, all kinds of different things. Your camera. All right, so let's move over to this screen. There's nothing on this other screen. But anyways. You also have this button here, which will go into a browser. This is kind of like an Android system. So you have this uh, drought browser so you can surf the web. Once you pair your phone, it will use your, uh, your your data or whatever. Calculator, different things. Just like, I mean, settings. It's just like a uh, an Android system on your, on, your, uh, on your smartphone or whatever. Okay, so you have your volume here, uh, different menus, back back button certain screens you need to go back out of and then you have a day and night mode here of course the clock is always on the top right which is neat handy four-way flashers are here we already saw the start button here is your 
climate control. Now it said tri zones. You have the front two are separate. Uh, let's go ahead and sync those so you can see what I'm talking about. See the now they're synced. You can unsync them. So now this one will be separate from the other side. You also have rear climate control that you can adjust separately. There's your fan speed where you want the air to blow and recirculate the air. You also have the front and rear defrosters and the de rear defrosters will also turn on your heated side mirrors. Okay, so down here you have your heated seat controls, little storage pocket. There's the place to plug in your cell phone for your Android Auto type stuff. Power supply, 12 volt. Cup holders are right here. And then here's your shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out the backup camera. Active grid lines on the backup camera so you can see which way the the vehicle is going to go in reverse. You also have three different views. So you have a broad view, a little bit tighter view, and then backing up to a trailer, it'll give you a top down view, which is awesome. You also have a neutral drive and then a low range in case you're going down hills or whatever. And then here's like an off road type uh, button right here intelligent traction man management. So uh, when you push that button, you can cycle through normal snow, mud, or sand, which is awesome. So that's right there. Okay, so here's like an open space to put some stuff. You also have a storage compartment here with a little tray that slides forward and back. We can slide it all the way back here. And this is where you find a big storage compartment. You also have a 12 volt power supply and an auxiliary input and, and your uh, another USB down here for charging stuff. You have an auto dim rear view mirror, which is auto dimming right now because I have the, the light sensor covered up with the with the shade here. You have some tap lights, LED tap lights here. The interior lights you can turn on with this button, turn them off, or you can have them turn on with the door by push it, pushing it in the center position. Home link garage door opener controls are there. This is for your sliding rear glass, so let's take a look at that. Nice. All right. And then this is for your uh, your sunroof, which we'll show you in a second. You have a place to put your shades, and you have a conversation mirror. Check it out, so you can keep an eye on everybody. Nobody's making faces behind your back. Okay, so sunroof, shade that blocks 100% of the light, that you can move out of the way can tilt it up or you can move it all the way back like so and on a hot day like today you can just cover up keep all the sun from getting on you visors have mirrors and lights all right let's take a look at the visibility in the back not too bad you have the, the big nice big window in the back you also have the side windows there and there all right so let me know what you think of the black edition really awesome vehicle so thank you for watching 2017 honda ridgeline black edition it's really exciting to see this, this is a First, just came in this morning, this vehicle. So thank you for watching. Thank you to East Coast Honda for allowing me to show off an awesome vehicle. And I'll see you guys next time. Gator Morning Show has got your free tickets. Listen up at 8.10 tomorrow morning to win. Celebrates George Gershwin's famed opera as interpreted by visual artists since its creation. Featuring paintings from the 1930s, including works by American realist George Biffith, who illustrated the original Porgy and Bess libretto in 1935.